Peering over the fence of one of Albertville, Alabama's poultry plants, there are two things that strike you. First, the United States produces an unbelievable amount of chicken. And second, the sudden departure of tens of thousands of workers from Alabama seems to have had little effect on the operations. But away from the forklifts and hiss of the factory floor, downtown Albertville tells a different story. Two years after Alabama passed a law requiring everyone from a landlord to a school administrator to verify immigration status, the town is a much quieter place. El Sol King Pollo seems rather sleepy as only a handful of patrons constitute a lunchtime rush. And just down the street, the Tienda El Sol supermarket says they're seeing only about half the number of customers they once did. Algunos, cuando salió la ley de Alabama, ellos dejaron botar sus casas y sus cosas y salieron huyendo. The pastor's tale is a familiar one in this corner of northeast Alabama, a portion of the state that some say has been disproportionately affected by the state's effort to reform immigration. Alabama has some of the strictest immigration laws in the country, and the irony is both critics and proponents of what's known as HB 56 argue that it's the byproduct of federal inaction. Our hope would have been in a perfect world, none of the states would have ever had to act. If the federal government had been doing its job, the states would not have been required to try to do anything. Republican State Senator Scott Beeson was the co-sponsor of the law. Uh, the number of the members of the business community that support Republican legislatures uh, oppose the legislation. So frankly, if you were looking at it from a pure political sense, uh, it wouldn't be the smartest thing to do. While the state's unemployment rate has dropped since the June 2011 passage, a 2012 study from the University of Alabama finds that the business community's anxiety was perhaps not misplaced. For lack of a better phrase, we shot ourselves in the foot. Economics professor Samuel Addy was the author of the study. The actual macro impacts that I estimate for one year is about um, 70,000 lost jobs and losses of about uh, 11, 2.3 to uh, almost 11 billion in GDP. Addy stresses the full economic impact of HB 56 won't be known for another two years. As to be expected, this ambiguity, coupled with the state's declining unemployment rate, provides ammunition for the bill's sponsors. I personally believe that HB 56 put more Alabamians back to work than any of the economic development projects that we've done through the legislature in the last decade or two. But, as with everything, the devil is in the details. The writers of the law, the authors and sponsors of the law, actually uh, try to claim credit for that. Um, we have a very good uh, labor market information division of our Department of Labor, and they, they wouldn't come out to support these guys uh, because they know better. Um, the reason unemployment is falling is partly demographic. I mean, we've known that the baby boomers will be hitting retirement already, so we know that was coming. In fact, back in Albertville, HB 56 inadvertently opened a window for 34-year-old Puerto Rican Jorge Polanco. And despite having to show identification at nearly every turn and losing a portion of his index finger following an accident on a chicken saw, he says he is not considering leaving Alabama. Dile que pasa que hay racismo. Este en cuestión de la economía, mi país no está muy buena hoy en día. Y por ese motivo pues yo no me iría a mi país. But he also says, despite this, it is still very difficult to fill the poultry plant jobs. Renuncia a la gente a diaria, entran 15 y se van 11 o 12. As Edward R. Murrow noted, in his famous 1960 Thanksgiving Day broadcast, Harvest of Shame, the migrants working in the United States might have the strength to harvest the country's fruits and vegetables, but they do not have the strength to influence legislation. Perhaps, in the 52 years since that broadcast, it will be the strength of their economic influence that ultimately changes that. Christopher Booker, Financial Times, Albertville, Alabama.